Bang Deal. And it was a superb game on Saturday. Um, it was on Channel 4 in Dublin. A uh, couple of few thousand fans attended as well, first time in two, in two years, if, if I remember rightly, or maybe 18 months. Absolutely superb game as well, and uh, it was a thrill to watch that one before going to the um, Wales-Canada game, uh, which kicked off a couple of hours after this game started as well. But good for Ireland, you know, obviously they're missing their British Lions stars at the moment, but they did field a, a very, very strong team. And it is a testament, in fairness to Ireland, about how strong the team is and the depth that's coming through in Irish rugby that they were able to field um, the side that they did. You know, they had, you know, the lion skipper from the first test, um, Peter Romani. Um, he was he was in the side. James Ryan made a spectacular recovery from what's been ailing him recently to lead the team. I was really impressed with Alton Delan in the second row. Um, he's, I think he's been, you know, because Ireland have a, a massive amount of quality in the second row. I thought I, I think he's been really unlucky over the last, say, three or four years, not to have forced his way into the, um, say, you know, have had more tests under his belt or get more starts is the way I'd put it. You know, they've got a lot of depth in the second row island. There's certain teams have got a lot of depth in certain areas, like Wales are very strong in scrum half back. Ireland's prop situation is outrageously good. The second row is superb as well. Um, you know, and there's other nations in Scotland, Scotland and just you know they have they, again they've got fantastic players uh, like in, in the back three as well in their back line um, as well. So you know, uh, but Ireland look at the team that they named. You know, Hugo Keenan for me, um, Hugo Keenan was man of the match. I thought he was really safe as houses um, in the back three. Didn't really slip up too much, I don't think. He, his positioning was good. He, aerially, he was brilliant as well. Um, he carried well. He did all the little things pretty well, which I thought, which is support runs, is rucking, securing, positioning. Yeah, I thought I thought he was pretty safe as houses. And I think it's a testament that, um, he, you know, if uh, Stockdale was in the same team being named, that, you know, both Stockdale and Jordan Lama, who could both play fullback and have played fullback for Ireland as well, that Andy Farrell gave Hugo Keane on the start over the two of them. Uh, I think Lama is a real, really funny one because, I mean, I know Jonathan Davis really likes him, the commentator on BBC, but I don't know what it is. He's just seemed to have lost his way over the last 12 months. I don't know whether he's been figured out a little bit or there's been uh, injuries or... He just seems to have lost a little bit of the edge or some spark. He, you know, he, I mean, he did all right today, but uh, so yesterday, but he wasn't um, wasn't set in the world of like. I mean, he's you know when you burst onto the scene, it was kind of like right, this guy is going to be one of our back three or full back sorted for the next ten years, and he's not really sort of made that his own. He didn't really sort of force his way into the island team in the first instance. Um, but yeah, he's a funny one. Hopefully, he can. You know, turn around and uh, against the USA next week he scores a hat-trick and shuts me up. But, you know, yeah. but the, Ireland's backline was very strong. I think they took a lot of, um, they saw what the Lions did to Japan last week by hitting up through the centres and, um, again, two other Irish centres last week, which is uh, Bandiaki and Robbie Henshaw. And Ireland this week picked uh, Farrell and uh, Stuart McCloskey. Uh, both really physical, really good centres, you know, game line sort of merchants. But, you know, I, I did sort of see an awful lot more of offloading coming into the Irish game, which was, you know, pretty much sort of a no-go under um, Joe Schmidt. But the offload, offloading when it's necessary, offloading when there's an opportunity. You know, I think Ireland did both of those as well, in fairness to them. They were pretty good. Uh, Jameson Gibson Park was, pretty, was very good as well at nine. Uh, Joey Carberry is just getting minutes in, back into him after his sort of two or three years of really bad injuries. I think we just, we just, you know, for Ireland's sake, they need to give minutes into Joey Carberry. There's only a few tests now left until the next World Cup, actually. Um, Kilcoyne is just ridiculous and probably fantastic. Kelleher was okay. Finley Bielham was absolutely brilliant as well. I will be honest, I was very impressed with Finley Bielham at prop. Um, he was really, really good. Carried well, got his try. Um, he was, he was everywhere. Um, he was playing as if it was his last game ever. Uh, he was absolutely superb at first. And he deserved to start as well. He's been excellent last year. But Japan, they did bring the game. They did bring their A game as well. Um, and it was, a, it was a thrilling test overall. 
you know, you've got a bit of a seesaw game going on, first half, second half. I mean, Japan, you know, could have gone into half time um, pretty much, was it 17 12 up? But there was a stupid uh, decision by the uh, Japan number nine to run pretty much across the line of Jordan Lama, and the referee spotted and gave a penalty. And then within about a minute after that, then Ireland had crossed the trial and got under the sticks and um, they'd gone in in front at half time and that really could have pretty much could have you know made the difference of the game. There was um, I think around the forty four second half it was where Japan were knocking on the door and there was a bit of a turn in the game where Japan had scored, Ireland had tried to counter-attack, got turned over and instead of punishing Ireland and really turning the screw and Japan were in front at this point you know, I think it was 24-19 it was 24-19 to Japan and there was a turnover around the halfway line and there was no fallback whatsoever for Ireland you had everybody running trying to run back and the nine had kicked it out on the full and really let Ireland off there and then subsequently from a kick out um score subsequently off that to make it 26-24 so they're back in front and it's small margins at the top level of rugby which really does seesaw the game and particularly in this one as well I thought Japan were good though, really good value for their 31 points um, they had a try chalked off another Tim Lafayette try chalked off which I mean it didn't really look like a forward pass you know, just eyeballing it I mean I suppose it didn't really give any other TV angles from what I saw of the coverage. Uh, I think the referee sort of made a bit of a guesstimate. Uh, it didn't look forward, but Ireland will take that. And Japan did go back and score eventually anyway, so you know I suppose it does even itself out. But you know Ireland in credit, Ireland credit them at the end of the game. They were 33-31 up with about 20 to go, and they had two penalty opportunities later on. And, the last 20 of the game. By that point, Japan, their quality had gone. Matsushima come off injured, which was unfortunate. And, um, you know, they did change a lot of their stars in the back line as well. Like, um, so, you know, their quality had gone a little bit. And Ireland chose to kick for the, kick for the, the, the post and get the win under their belt, which, uh, you know, fair play to Ireland. They, they stuck it out and, you know, they had some really good, um, outstanding performances as well. You know, Japan, though, yeah, I mean, just keep on doing what you're doing boys you know I know you've you've lost to Ireland today and you may think like a, a missed opportunity and it is it is a missed opportunity because I think that you know when they were in front and they could have turned the screw that would have won I think that would have won up the game uh, credit to Ireland they did come back but Japan uh, when they had that sort of kind of killer instinct I would say when they played Scotland in the World Cup and they just looked like, listen, we, we are going to put you to the sword. And it doesn't matter what you do, we're going to put you to the sword. Uh, that was missing, I think. And that has been missing from both performances against the Lions and against Ireland as well. Maybe because of the lack of sort of uh, turnover of different personnel as well. And also the lack of competitive rugby that they've played internationally uh, for 18 months as well. But they will get back into their groove. They still look like the same Japan that they were in the World Cup. You know, if you give it to them before the game and said, listen, boys, you're going to lose it down the way, points, but you can score 31 points. I think, you know, you know after, after being out of the rugby for two years, they can say, yeah, we'll take that. You know, they, they were vastly improved on um, last week's performance against the Lions. Japan were definitely you know, way more organised, winning collisions, slowing ball, down, turning ball over. You know, their, their tries were a mixture of, um, you know, short, medium and long-term tries as well, which was pretty good. So, you know, they just a fantastic team to watch as well. You know, counter attacking, you can't take your eyes off them because they get bodies back, and then as soon as they they look to offload or they look to offload in the tackle as well, uh, it's, you know, their skill level is absolutely amazing. Um, you know, I, I would actually put Japan's skill level up there in the tackle, the offloading, alongside France and the All Blacks at the moment. They are I, I, that's, that's how highly I, I really do rate Japan at the moment, and they're fantastic value to watch for any rugby team. Um, but overall, I think Andy Farrell would be very, very happy with 
uh, Ireland's win. They'll go into the USA next week. A very similar game, but I don't I think USA may be a notch down on the um, a notch down from Japan as it stands at the moment, despite a very good showing in Twicken up today. Uh, Ireland should be winning against the USA by about uh, 10 to 15 points as well, similar to England today. But, you know, we'll wait and see. Hopefully there's not too many injuries for Ireland. But you could definitely see a bit of a transition for Irish rugby away from the sort of uh, possession-based bash, 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 uh, ball retention, ball retention, Joe Schmidt in a game plan where, you know, they are using their set piece where they have massive domination as a foothold in the game. You know, they've got fantastic aerial ability as well. You know, a lot of GAA boys or boys who play GAA in the years and those, those, those skills are transferable. They are there. Um, their centers are absolutely massive and they can always get over the game line as well. But I like the blend that they have in the back row as well. Like when they've got you know they've got a brilliant blend. You've got Omani, Turnover Merchant and Moore of course Van der Fleo is fantastic, very physical in the tackle and turning the ball over as well. And Quayle Doris as well, you know, back to it as well. Hopefully he can find a little bit of that um, lens to form as well to come back. And, and also um, Baird who come on as well is a massive prospect for Ireland as well. So overall I think both sides would be quite happy with that. Japan, you know, I would be worried for Japan if they were not able to find that groove, ever, uh, groove again that they did in the World Cup that maybe they've been figured out or the, their sort of skill level have dropped off or that there's a disparity in quality and it doesn't look as if they've that doesn't look as if that is the case. Maybe the quality issue will come into play, but I don't think that the quality for Japan is say they've got four, five world class players and the rest are average. I just think that when you take when you go away from a core 30, 30 players of uh, of Japan or core even twenty five players I would say of, of Japan's match day squad, that's when you start seeing a, a lack in quality as well. Then in certain areas of the field, definitely not at nine because I think Japan's nines are absolutely superior. They'd have to have a Wales by how good the nines that they're producing are. Um, but yeah, super superb game to watch just before Wales versus Canada came on as well. And, um, very much looking forward to seeing uh, next week's game for Ireland and uh, credit to Japan. You know, they're still in the hunt, uh, still back with it and, and dying at the top table of international rugby. So, 